let's begin with today's exercise 11, which is about stochastic policy gradients. So in this task, we will control a lunar lander. So as you can see in this small GIF here, we have this uh, spaceship maybe, uh, which is trying to land on the moon. And it's trying to do so, so safely, um, which means on its two legs without too much velocity and also in between these two flags. So basically that's the goal here. Um, and our state and action space for this is given um, here. So the state space is continuous. We have the X and Y positions of the lunar lander. We have the velocities in X and Y direction. We have its uh, rotational angle. We have its rotational speed. And we also have um, two binary values, which, is, which are zero if the respective leg of the lunar lander has contact to the ground or one if it has contact. So that we know, okay, we have hit the ground. It might be, um, we might be in danger zone or we might already be close to landing at the right spot. And for the action, we have two different actions. One is the main engine, which um, is between minus one and zero. Ah, uh, no, sorry, it's between minus one and one. And between minus one and zero, the action does absolutely nothing. And between zero and one, the action gives between 50 and 100% of the available power of the engine. So basically, this also means the agent, uh, when operating this lunar lander, has to learn that between minus one and one zero, or maybe not, or it's not just has to learn it, but also has to deal with that uh, half of the action space um, is yeah, neglectable. Um, and for the side engines, we have between minus one and minus 0.5, uh, between 15 and 100% of the available right engine power. And between 0.5 and one, we have between 50% to 100% of the available um, left engine power. And um, this is even more tricky because not just do we does the action between minus 05 and 05 do nothing at all, but also it's for either the left engine or the right engine regarding wherever you take the exact engine uh, action here. So it's quite difficult action space and also it is continuous which means that we, as we have learned in last week's and uh, this week's Q&A, um, we want to approximate the policy. And for that, what we want to start here with in this exercise is a reinforce algorithm, which is based on Monte Carlo methods. And for this, I have prepared here the pseudocode. It's from the lecture. And yeah, so basically what we, what will we do in the first cell, we will, I think, repeat what you have done in the last one or two exercises. I don't know how many, um, we will want to use this RBF feature visor, um, which was introduced back then as a mean to have a better state vector or a better feature vector for neural networks. So this cell is basically just to yeah, do, derive yourself a feature visor and also to see how we can start an environment. And then we can go right ahead into the task, which was that you uh, were supposed to program the log likelihood Gaussian, um, which is a natural, natural logarithm of our policy pi here. Um, and our policy pi in this lecture, since we are dealing with stochastic policy gradients, is a stochastic distribution. So given a state vector x, um, we are given a distribution and will randomly draw an action u. 
And yeah, so in our case, this is this multivariate um, normal distribution. Um, and it is multivariate because we are having two actions. So the main engine and the side engines. And we have, that means that we have to pick two actions. So I would say in reality, we would, since landing on the moon, is an engineering problem we would probably not want to have a stochastic policy um, because uh, we want to eliminate everything which could be random but instead have like real deterministic behavior um, but what we can also see or we'll see later on in the exercise that we can easily once we have trained an agent in this stochastic way, we can easily make it deterministic and therefore have have not don't have an, an, a random um, agent anymore. Okay, so why do we even derive the natural logarithm of the policy? That's basically because here in this um, Monte Carlo reinforce method uh, in the update function. What we need is the natural logarithm of the policy. And since our policy is a multivariate Gaussian distribution, we want to calculate the natural log logarithm of this distribution so that we can later update our agent. And yeah, maybe generally talking, I think you have talked about this algorithm already last week, so we will not go into deep into that. But basically, it is once again a Monte Carlo algorithm, which means we are generating a whole episode um, and collecting states from x0 to xt, or x capital T. And then we will update the policy based on this natural logarithm, which comes from the policy theorem, or let's say all of this update comes from the policy theorem, and together with the return g, which we can, in the case of Monte Carlo, directly calculate by the discounted rewards. So that's what we will do now in the exercise. Maybe first of all, before we go to the lock lock. <clears throat> Sorry, log likelihood Gaussian. Um, I want to show you, since I think this is new for this uh, exercise, we, now our policy is now um, an approximator, since we have uh, an, um, since we have a continuous action space, um, and we approximate it with the means of a neural network. So we have here our policy network, and it has uh, two different uh, linear layers, which are concatenated, uh, which are um, stacked one behind each other. Um, each of them has a leaky relu activation function. And then in the last layer, we have, uh, let's say two different branches, one for the mu, mu for the uh, mean of the, of the Gaussian distribution and one for the sigma for the standard deviation. And what we will do for the standard deviation um, is that basically we would have four values for sigma um, in a Gaussian distribution. However, we will only derive two, um, two values. Um, you have talked about this in the, in the lecture two, um, but once again, maybe we will we will assume here in this uh, exercise that our actions are um, independent from each other. That means they don't have any cross correlation um, and therefore we are not um, estimating these. This is making the problem a little easier to learn. Um, and especially since we want to use the policy in a deterministic way in the end, this is desirable uh, anyways. However, in reality, it's to be expected that maybe the actions are correlated, um, the main and the side engines. So this is a simplification here, which we do, um, which might not be completely realistic. So yeah, once when we uh, give like the state x, 
to our policy network, it will give us a mean and a standard or a standard a variance matrix, um, which we can then put into a normal distribution. And for the log likelihood Gaussian, I just uh, quickly prepared how you can calculate the natural, you know, natural logarithm of the multivariate um, distribution. Basically, you could have programmed it similarly or maybe using different functions. However, what we have in the end is like, this is our final result here. So we can see we have minus one half in every of our summation terms. So we got this here, minus one half. And then we have, I think, yeah, this is the constant term here. So it's the dimension, which should be two times the logarithm of two times pi. Then we got the this log deterministic sigma term here, which is this one. And in the end, we have this quadratic term. So this one, which we calculate here in this line. So um, this is just the natural, natural logarithm of our policy, which we will later need in our um, algorithm. Okay, so here we got some initialization, which is not so important for now, just to stabilize the network learning. Um, okay, so what else do we have? We have an interact function, which is now, maybe I can also go back to the pseudo code, um, which you've by now probably seen in many exercises. So how does our stochastic policy interact with the environment? Basically, we have our, we give, we derive our feature state. So we use our feature visor with the RBF features and transform our state. And then we use our policy, which is our policy network to get a mu and a sigma. And then we have this deterministic flag. So either we want to have a deterministic agent, maybe we want a deterministic agent, maybe we want that later on when we um, actually uh, roll out our agent to a practical application, or at least during training or maybe even during deployment, we want to have it random. So if the deterministic flag is set to true, what we want is we just want to apply mu. So the mean, the mean of our actions, we just want to apply it here. We just, we don't want to have uh, any, any random component. So, but note that this mu is not a global mu, mu, but instead it is dependent on the feature state. So it's just basically, it would basically be our policies giving us an action here. If we are, we, we are not deterministic, what we would like to have is, this random multivariate Gaussian or normal distribution where the mean is our mu and the covariance matrix is sigma. And so this is basically our interaction with the environment. Then we have this gather experience function. So we need the interact function in order to be able to gather experience from the environment. What we do here is, um, we iterate through the episode for max episode length steps. Um, we also need this because we are operating on a Monte Carlo, uh, on a Monte Carlo algorithm, which uh, expects the, pro the problem to be um, cuttable into episodes. So we need some kind of end here. And yeah, then what we do is we interact with the environment, sorry, um, and we save state actions and rewards. And we already save the, these um, ln of pi's here. So we already save these here because we are having all of these available at the moment. And so we save them for later, but we don't do the updates yet. And yeah, that's it from the Gaza experience so far. Then we have a function which uh, 
is to compute the returns. So basically this is the for loop, which you can see here for T in the length of states. So this is for one episode. And this is basically this sum here. This here. Oh, a lot of red. Maybe let me remove some of it for now. Start again. So this sum. And what we have is, first of all, we iterate over all states. So basically this loop. And then we iterate over the rewards starting from, st from the state. So basically we start from our state plus one. We start from here and then we um, add to the return the gamma to the power of this term here, which starts always starts at zero and times the momentary reward. Um, the code which you have, if you already had a look at the solution, um, was missing something. So basically the code which you have, which you might have already seen, um, stops here. So just appends GT. However, taking a look at it today and preparing for this exercise, I saw that we were missing something. Um, which is this term here. So we are still not doing the update. However, at the end, we want to multiply uh, for the update, we want to multiply this whole term with gamma to the power of k, uh, which is our current time step t. And we have not done this in the learn function. So you can see here where we derive the policy loss. We are multiplying this log part and we are multiplying G. Um, so this log part and G. However, we are neglecting this gamma here. And so what I've done today is I added this gamma to the power of T as a multiplication directly to G. So basically I um, did these two together. So you don't have to take care of these anymore. Um, so yeah, uh, but we always, so I already tried this and I trained it for like 2,500 steps, which you can see here. And basically it doesn't, so far doesn't really change um, how well the agent seems to train. So I would assume this term might be neglectable here. However, I will still update uh, this to the code in the repository and I will also execute it again. And so that you will have the, that you will have an, a version which actually reflects the pseudo code from the lecture. So sorry about that. Um, just so that you know, this has been added. Okay, so what we do here now is we computed the returns G plus multiplied with this gamma to the power of K or it's called T in this code. And then what's left is only the learn function, which, uh, yeah, as I said before, is now just putting everything together, the log probabilities and this G times gamma to the power of K. And then we can, as you have already seen probably quite often now, um, train our neural network on that loss. And then in the end, our whole training room loop becomes very small because we have already dealt with all of the things in this pseudo code uh, in functions. And yeah, now if you, I don't know if you have also tried to execute it, um, this cell. Um, so we are doing 5,000 episodes. And for me, this executed quite fast. So it only took 24 minutes, I think. And we can see uh, when looking at uh, how the reward behaves that the mean or the moving average is increasing. And we can also see for the end that some episodes seem to have been quite successful. So it says in the introduction of the exercise that we expect um, the episode to be successful if the reward is above 200. 
So we can assume that maybe if we had learned a little longer here, um, we might have slowly gotten further to, uh, let's say, a successful policy. Um, however, we we will uh, not continue training here for now. Uh, for this exercise, uh, this should be sufficient that you see, okay, it is learning something, but it shows a lot of variance, which is to be expected by Monte Carlo. And it's taking a lot of time, um, let's say, in simulation. So we needed to simulate a lot of episodes to get to this performance, which is still not uh, sufficient. So we are seeing uh, typical problems Monte Carlo algorithms have. And yeah, so this, the next cell is just for you to play around. So uh, I advise you to try uh, this code yourself. So what you can do is you can set deterministic to false or true. And this should be, this is another bug, which I fix here now. Sorry for that. So you can set this flag to false or true. And then this code will either try to execute it randomly using the Gaussian distribution or deterministically using the mu. And you can then see whether the stochastic or the deterministic policy is better. Um, from my experience, they might not be too different. And sometimes even the stochastic policy could be better than the deterministic one. Um, however, what you can see now from um, a test one I did uh, yesterday, I think, that the returns for the episodes are still not very good, at least in this training. So we do, do not reach 200 at any point here. Um, so there's still room for improvement, which for Monte Carlo uh, applications could either be by not using, so we could either add, for example, a baseline. I think this was introduced in, in the lecture sure so that we try to minimize this variance here or we could move away from Monte Carlo um, um, algorithms and instead go to for example TD targets um, which update the actor critic stepwise and do not wait for whole episodes until they do an update so that's what we also will do in the second exercise um, do you have any questions so far? Okay. If that's not the case, then maybe let's just proceed to the second task. What we do here is we are now we now want to use an actor critic method with TD0 targets, so uh, going away from Monte Carlo methods. And the big difference compared to um, the Monte Carlo method, which we have seen before, is that we now have two neural networks. So we have, once again, our policy function pi, which we leave unchanged. But we also have a state value function b hat which estimates, sorry, the um, value of a state. And when we estimate the, so let me start again. The update of the policy function looks very similar to that of the Monte Carlo. So we see this log probability again, and you see the gamma to the power of k again. Um, However, this time, so maybe let me show this here again. So gamma to the power of k and the log probability here. Um, but here in Monte Carlo, since we were dealing with whole episodes, we could just use the return g, which we could actually calculate. Uh, in this case, we do a, an approximation of it, um, this delta here, which we can uh, derive using the TD0 update rule or the TT0 uh, a target rule, um, which we then bootstrap out of value function estimates. So v hat of xk of the current state and v hat of the next state. 
and so for the and yes so that's for the policy network and for the critic network which is our uh, value function we can just update it using this delta which is basically the error and the uh, the um, um, gradient with respect to the value function of the state. Okay, so therefore what we have to do in our code is we need another neural network for the critic, which is now estimating the value function. So we have this critic network here, which has one only one value at its output, um, which is basically the value estimate. And yeah, we initialize ourselves a new critic network and a new policy network here. And we call them actor for the policy and critic for the critic. So this is the terminology for actor critic methods. And then I think for this task, yes, you only had to, and probably this move, you only had to write two functions, two more functions, the learn critic and the learn actor function. And basically in the learn critic function, as we've seen here in this uh, line of the pseudo code, what we want is we want to have uh, we want to have the value estimate of the current step. So this value is um, let me, this value would then be um, the S, uh, the value estimate of this state. And then without any gradient, we want to have our target, so to say, our next value, which is this one. And then we calculate delta, which is the reward plus gamma times next value minus this value um, in case we are not in this terminal state. So then we do this whole thing. Uh, ah, yeah, minus, no, the whole thing, sorry. We just do this whole line. And then the loss is minus delta times this value. So this part delta times this value and this these lines of code will do the automatic uh, differentiation and uh, do the back propagation and calculate the gradients here. So we do not have to do this manually. For the actor, Basically, uh, what we have is we have already everything given. So the delta was calculated before. We just multiply the delta with our um, logarithm here. So we have our logarithm. We have our delta. Oh, sorry. This is not the delta. Uh, <laughs> so we have our delta. We have our logarithm. And we have our gamma to the power of k, which is denoted as i here which I think is um, most of the time when you use it, this I, you think of a unit matrix. Um, so I think I will rename this um, and upload when I, when I update this uh, exercise. However, just so that you know, this I is basically gamma to the power of K. So we can directly in this function calculate the actor loss like this, and then to the update to our network and as we as we already know how to do and so what we do in our training loop is basically we have our number of episodes and then in each episode we have a maximum episode length which i think in this case we don't actually have to use anymore since we are not using a monte carlo method anymore so i would say we could also remove this um, However, for the sake of um, staying consistent to the first exercise, we still have it inside. And so what we do is we can reuse the interact function since we are operating on the same policy as before uh, to generate our server next state, reward, done, action, new sigma signals. And then we can just afterwards call the learn critic and the learn actor functions and have to make sure that gamma to the power of k actually gets updated at every step. So this is updating our gamma. 
So yeah, when we execute this for only 500 episodes, so a lot less than we did for Monte Carlo, what we can observe is that in very little time, we are able to reach a lot higher returns on average than in the Monte Carlo case. However, if you have executed this on your computer, um, you will have noticed that this actually takes quite some time. So I think for me, this took three hours. So compared to the 24 minutes, this is at least six times as slow. And so what we have gained basically is a lot of sampling efficiency, which means we have to operate a lot less with the environment, which is great because which can be great sometimes, for example, on real applications. Uh, imagine we wouldn't we wouldn't operate here on a simulation of a lunar lander, but instead we would have like an actual machine which wants to land on the moon. Um, we cannot have 5,000 trials um, until it's finally successful. So we, we have to do as little sampling as possible to have a good controller as possible. So this this is good for real applications to have sample efficiency. However, we um, sacrificed sample efficiency. I know we, we gained sample efficiency for the sacrifice of computational um, complexity or efficiency, which because our critic network is also quite big. Um, so you can see here 400 new ones in the uh, in the hidden layers. Um, we, since it's quite big, it will take a lot of time to train it uh, properly. So computation, we need a lot of computational power and uh, we need longer to train it if we don't have computational capacities. So this comes at a sacrifice, yet uh, what we see is uh, when we do this execution here, which is once again, not correctly programmed. I'm sorry for that. Um, when you execute it here, what you can see is that the rewards are always, almost always, in my test one, I had an episode which went wrong, but almost always above 200. So um, if you execute this code yourself, what you can see is that most of the time the lunar lander is able to successfully land on the moon. And that despite having only learned for 500 episodes. So what you could also try is to learn longer, maybe 1000 episodes, maybe 2000 episodes. It will take a lot of time, um, depends on your computer. Um, but at this point, we are able to have a successful stochastic or, or let's say stochastically trained, but now deterministic policy, um, which has solved our problem. Um, yeah, so do you have any questions regarding exercise two or regarding the whole exercise? Um, any questions, anything which is unclear? Okay, since this does not seem to be the case, I will end this here for today. Um, wish you a nice week. Uh, and yeah, see you maybe next week.